Welcome to lecture 16 of our course, Aortic Dissection. Aortic dissection is a devastating complication of hypertension and atherosclerosis of the aorta and presents with a sudden, sharp, stabbing chest pain that usually radiates to the back and migrates down the torso as the dissection progresses. Dissection means separation of the layers of the aorta. It takes a bit of imagination to understand what happens in dissection, but we'll try to explain it in simple terms. This is a diagram of the aorta. This is the LVOT. This is the aortic valve, and these are the roots of the coronaries, which arise from the aorta just distal to the aortic valve from these pouches called the sinuses of Valsalva. This is the root of the brachiocephalic artery, or the innominate artery, and these are the roots of the left common carotid and subclavian arteries. Now, the wall of the aorta, like all arteries, is composed of three concentric layers. The intima on the inside, the media in the middle, and the adventitia on the outside. When the aorta is diseased, the intima loses some of its elasticity, and a blood pressure spike can stretch the aorta to a point beyond which the intima can't stretch any further, and it tears. If the tear happens through all the layers of the aorta, this is called aortic rupture, and rapid fatal exsanguination into the mediastinum occurs. In dissection, however, only the intima is torn, and the blood, under high pressure, forces apart the intima and the media and fills the space between them. So now the affected segment of the aorta, there's the adventitia and the media on the outside, intact, uh, the intima on the inside, and there's blood in between. The lumen is now narrowed because of the extra layer of blood between the intima and the media. All of that is not the real problem. The aortic lumen is wide enough to withstand a lot of narrowing without significant hemodynamic effects. The real problem happens when the dissection spreads to involve the ostium of a branch, such as the innominate subclavian or common carotid. Again, the blood tracks through between their media and intima, but in this case, it can easily narrow their intima lumens to the point of total occlusion sometimes. Dissection can spread forward along the aorta as far as the mesenteric and renal arteries, and it could also spread backward to the proximal ascending aorta and disrupt the anatomy of the aortic valve leaflets, causing acute aortic regurgitation. More importantly, it can involve and obstruct the ostea of the coronaries, causing acute myocardial infarction. This is very important to bear in mind because it means that myocardial infarction and aortic dissection can coexist, and that finding a myocardial infarction in an ECG of a patient presenting with, with pain suggestive of dissection does not exclude dissection. Now that you have an idea of what aortic dissection is, it's time to learn what it looks like on echo. Transesophageal echo is about 80% sensitive for detection of aortic dissection, and diagnosis rests on visualizing an intimal flap, which is the separated intimal layer. This is what an intimal flap looks like on 2D echo, and sometimes placing color Doppler can help you distinguish the true aortic lumen in which you can see color flow from the false lumen in which you don't see any color flow. Sometimes there will also be an exit tear back into the lumen, and then you can see a jet of blood flowing back into the lumen. In most cases, you'll also notice a dilated aorta. Normal ascending aortic diameter should be less than 36 millimeters. You can measure it using the caliper. This is an example of a patient with aortic dissection in which the dissection caused acute aortic regurgitation. It's mild in this case, though. This is another example of aortic dissection in which the blood between the intima and the media, the blood under the intima flap has thrombosed, and that's why it looks white, bright, and echogenic in this case. Dissection of the ascending aorta is usually most evident in the left peristernal long axis view, proximally, but if you want to look more distally, there's a special view called the suprasternal view, which you get by placing the probe in the suprasternal fossa directed downwards with the knob pointing towards 11 o'clock. Adjust your position until you get a view like this. This is the aortic root, the arch, and the ostea of the innominate subclavian and common carotid arteries, and below is the descending thoracic aorta. You should check all these views for features of aortic dissection. That's it for this lecture. See you in the next lecture, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy.